Hello, welcome to Mrs. Law's class. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to graph the reciprocal trig functions. So we're going to take a look at how to graph um, cosecant, secant, and also cotangent. So let's start with cosecant and secant. So these functions are the reciprocal of sine x and cos x, respectively. So to graph them, um, it is convenient to actually to graph sine or cosine first, and then we're going to use our knowledge of graphing reciprocals to graph cosecant and secant. So let's take a look at how to graph cosecant. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to draw a rough graph of sine. And I'm going to draw this dotted because it's not the graph, but it's going to aid us in drawing uh, the cosecant graph. So we know that it starts at zero here and ends at two pi. Middle point is pi. We have a max of pi over two and then a minimum at three pi over two. All right, so graphing this, we would get something that looks like this. And I'm actually gonna keep continuing on. And I'm gonna go into the negatives as well. Okay, so now let's graph our reciprocal. So remember that the zeros of the original graph become asymptotes. So we're going to have asymptotes at zero, and there's another asymptote at pi, and two pi, and so on. Okay. And we also know that where the graph is 1 and negative 1, it stays the same. So those are our invariant points. Okay. And then lastly, we can take a look at different points or parts of the graph. So from 0 to pi over 2, we can see that if I start at pi over 2 and follow the graph down, this is going towards 0. So instead of going towards 0, the reciprocal graph will move away from zero. So this is going to create a U shape, or this half of the U going up. Now when I go from pi over two to pi, again, we are going from a value of one, and then we're heading towards zero. So the reciprocal of that would be heading towards infinity. Okay, so let's look at the area where it's three pi over two. So 3 pi over 2, it's, uh, the value is a negative 1. If we go from 3 pi over 2 to pi, we can see that the graph is heading towards 0. And the reciprocal of 0 would be, I guess you could say, 1 over 0, just like before. So we're going to go 1 over 0, which is towards, this time, negative infinity. Because technically, it's actually going towards 0, but in the negative values. And then again, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, same thing, it's going towards zero, so the reciprocal would go away from zero. And this is one period, so we have a u, and then we have an upside down u, and that creates one period of cosecant. So we can keep continuing this on this side, and we can also draw our u on this side. And there would also be an asymptote here. So the period, is the same as sine, it's two pi. Now the main is not all real numbers because we have the asymptotes. So we could say that it's all real numbers, but x cannot equal every pi. So every pi, two pi, three pi, even zero, x doesn't exist. So we can say n pi, where x is a real number, and n, is a part of the integers. Okay, and now let's take a look at the range. We can see the u shapes, the upside down u's, the largest value is negative one. So we have y is less than or equal to negative one, and y is greater or equal to positive one. So that's how you can graph uh, the cosecant graph using the sine graph. So let's do the same thing with the secant. So we know the secant graph is the reciprocal of the 
cosine graph. So again, let's graph our cosine graph. So this time we're going to start at 0, 1, and we're going to 2 pi over and 1, and then at pi, it's negative 1, plug point at pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2 on the x-axis. So again, we're going to draw this as a dotted graph, just as our guide. And really, the cosine graph is just a shift of the sine graph. So same thing, we're going to draw our zeros, or sorry, where it was zero, we're going to draw in an asymptote. So we have one at negative pi over 2, positive pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and 5 pi over 2. So that's where our asymptotes are, where the zeros were. And then we have our negative ones and our positive ones. And then just like the sine graph, we are going to, or sorry, we should say the cosecant graph, we're going to draw our u's and our upside down u's. So you'll see that the secant graph just looks just like the cosecant, but it's shifted over by pi over 2. So the period is still 2 pi. It takes 2 pi before the graph repeats again. We need a, a u and an upside down u to make it complete. All right, now for this domain, it's a little bit different because we have to um, asymptotes at pi over 2 and then every pi. So we can say that the domain um, can't be pi over 2 and then plus n pi where x can be all real numbers, and n is an integer, okay? Same as a cosecant, the y value is less than or equal to negative one, and y is greater or equal to one. Okay, and then that's how you draw the secant graph. All right, next let's take a look at the cotangent. So cotangent is the reciprocal of 10. So let's graph um, our tan graph, and then we're going to use our knowledge again of reciprocals to graph our cotangent. So we know that the tan graph has asymptotes at pi over 2. So I'm just going to draw this one very lightly, actually. And negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And then again at 3 pi over 2 and 5 pi over 2. And then the tan graph, it has a point at 0 and then pi over 4 and 1, and then same, and that repeats. So it looks like a straight line, but remember it does curve. So I'm just going to draw this dot in so that we can use this as our guide. And I'll just draw two periods of tan, because that will give us an idea already of what cotangent is. All right, so um, all the zeros, for the reciprocal become asymptotes. So our asymptotes are over here. So I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to use purple here to show the reciprocal. So we have one also at pi. And then this would continue at 2 pi. Okay. Now this time we had asymptotes before. So all the asymptotes actually become zeros. So we'll have a zero here because the asymptote is, we can think of it as one over zero. And when we take the reciprocal, it'd be zero over one. Three pi over two, five pi over two, negative pi over two. The ones and the negative ones stay. So you'll notice the points are the same as our tan graph. However, this time, this is going, if we start at pi over four, and we work our way towards zero, this dotted part is going to zero, so the opposite would be going away from zero. And then over here, from pi over four to pi over two, the tan graph is going away from zero, so the opposite would be going towards zero, and it actually does, and hits over here. And then kind of using the same idea down here, we can actually connect all three of these points and it looks something like this. So basically, it kind of looks like a reflection of the tan graph and then shifted over. And I'll just draw one more over here. 
And we can actually even draw one on the negative x-axis. And there you have it. There is our cotangent graph. So it has a period of pi, just like tan, because you can see that it takes pi for it to repeat. So from here to here, and then from here to here again. The domain, x cannot be n pi, because we can see that every pi, there is an asymptote. Okay, x is all real numbers, and n is an integer. And then the range, just like our tan graph, it is all real numbers, because it goes up and up and up, and down and down and down. Okay, and then those are the basics of graphing cosecant, secant, and the cotangent graph.